Hello and thanks for joining us for this edition of Tech 24 coming up. Get ready to get inspired. We'll explore how nature and biology can give us clues on how to make technology faster and more efficient. And what's that smell? Later in the program, we'll be testing a new kind of alarm clock, one that gives a whole new meaning to wake up and smell the coffee. That'll be with Dan and Jay Cattle Car. It works in perfect harmony, way better than what man has made so far. Nature is an eternal source of wonder and inspiration, especially in the field of technology. Leonardo da Vinci famously tried to imitate the wings of a bird when he went drawing his flying machine more than 500 years ago. These days, inventors and engineers are still drawing inspiration from plants and animals in the wild. Mark Thompson has more. It's helping swimmers improve their times, planes to fly safer and faster, and influencing the shape of modern trains. Biomimicry is becoming increasingly popular. The technique provides sustainable solutions inspired by nature's own design. It hit the headlines at the 2008 Olympics. Swimmers there wearing high-tech outfits using such technology won 98% of the medals. The costumes were based on shark skin. Its surface is covered in microscopic teeth which are slip resistant, allowing water to slide over the animal. And the technology is also changing the airline industry. Denis Durag is the head of research at Airbus. He too wants to use shark skin technology. We want to place these strips on our plane, which will help reduce the friction of the aircraft. It's exactly the same principle used by shark to help it go faster, consume less energy and be a better predator. And it's not just sharks influencing Airbus. The upturned feathers at the tips of a step eagle's wing inspired the fuselages on Airbus A320 planes. It allows us to reduce our oil consumption by 4% for all our clients. So that's a reduction of millions of tons in CO2 emissions each year for a client company. Airbus isn't the only multinational company turning to biomimicry. A German company has taken cues from lizards' tongues to create this new robot. Its silicon head uses the same suction techniques to move objects. In recent years, around 150 startups across France have been set up to explore the technique. Today, this company is meeting with potential new clients. Glowy's designers believe they've come up with a potentially revolutionary design, a 100% ecological way of lighting made from luminescent organisms. It's not possible to see the light during the day. It's only visible in the dark. This is the source of their inspiration special bacteria present in jellyfish that light up in the dark. Glowy's researchers have cultivated their own bacteria and mixed it with water in plastic cases. The result is a substance that is transparent by day and illuminant at night. It can be used in shop windows, the front of buildings, furniture, traffic signs, and all this natural light will reduce our energy consumption. The business is trying to help turn one of nature's oldest tricks into one of man's newest ones. For more on nature and how it influences technology, Dan and Jay Cattlecar is on set. Welcome, Dan and Jay. Um, so we saw in that report how airplane design has been inspired by sharks. I gathered sharks have inspired other technologies as well. That's right. Scientists and researchers have been inspired by shark skin, It's particularly its texture. You know, though it may appear smooth, but there are small ridges, uh, small bumps on the shark skin, which may not be uh, visible to the naked eye, but they are prominently present. So what they do is they help in... Uh, keeping away algae or barnacle of the shark's uh, skin, basically. So what scientists are doing now, they're trying to recreate this entire procedure, uh, you know, in, in a different form. So they are creating new materials, like plastic-like materials, and they are etching it with grooves and small bumps. So they're, you know, small microorganisms, like microorganisms, like bacteria, for example, they will be kept away from these materials. And these 
Uh, these materials have great applications, for example, in hospitals where there's a great chance of infection. So, you know, these materials can be used for different, uh, different objects in hospitals. At the same time, we use technology on a day-to-day -day basis and we touch our phones so many times. So these materials can also be used to make the, say, for example, your phone case, which can keep off mucus, which can keep off bacteria away from, you know, it, basically it will ward it off. So right, that so is a very useful application. The and the good thing is, you know, a study was conducted which said that uh, using this material, uh, the chances of bacteria getting uh, clinging onto the onto this material are 94 percent less than with just the normal because material. Of the ridges. Exactly. Just because exactly it... because it just keeps them away. It doesn't allow them to attach to the surface. And normally, uh, you know, for the best material to keep away bacteria is copper because it has antimicrobial properties. So basically, oh, okay. it kills uh, bacteria. This material doesn't kill bacteria. It prevents them from attaching to it. Well. The study, the same study concluded that in case of copper, the chances of bacteria clinging onto copper are just 80%. So comparatively, this has better efficiency in keeping Even the bacteria away. copper. Yeah. And what about birds? I'm sure that they've also influenced technology. Yeah, right. You know, the site of uh, this Japanese high-speed bullet train called Shinkansen is quite fascinating with its long nose. Right. But this long nose serves a very important purpose. Uh, in the 1990s, uh, the engineer Aiji Nakatsu, he was inspired by... Uh, the way kingfisher, uh, the bird kingfisher, uh -huh. uh, got its prey. So what it does, it darts into the water, it catches its catches a fish basically, but doesn't create any you know significant ripples in the pond or in wherever the water body. Right, so, right. So he thought of. So there's maybe, something about the shape of that bird's beak. beak. Exactly. So this 50 foot long beak was attached uh, or was made a part of the high speed bullet train. See, one of the problems with high speed trains is that they create a lot of noise, especially when they are coming out of a tunnel. Uh -huh. In case of bullet trains in neighborhood you know, in the dense neighborhoods, right. you could hear this very strong sonic boom. So in order to overcome this problem, the uh, engineer Nakatsu, he came up with this solution. And it not only helped uh, quite, or uh, you know, reduce the noise of the train, but it also helped improve its e efficiency so the train could go hmm. faster okay. and it, it was more efficient. Multiple benefits. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And then uh, there are other interesting applications, I'm sure, that, that we haven't heard of yet. Yeah, the one which we use on a day-to-day -day basis, and I, I, frankly speaking, I cannot imagine our lives without Velcro, the ubiquitous application. It's right. funny how the Velcro came into existence. You know, in the early 1940s, a uh, Swiss engineer, he, he uh, George de Mestral, he went on a hike in the Alps with his dog, and after returning, he realized that, you know, those burrs, Yes. The, yeah, the, they, they got attached to his clothes, they got attached to the dog. But instead of just, you know, dusting them away or throwing them away, he got intrigued as to why they are clinging onto his pants. So he studied it under microscope uh -huh. and he realized that the birds have a very uh, unique property that they have strong hooks which attach to the soft fabric of the of the pants, they have, they have of hooks the trousers. In the in the little needles. Exactly. Hooks. On... So they are hooks basically. They are, you know, oh, yeah, okay. natural hooks. So he tried to recreate these hooks or the two two surfaces, like the hooks and the soft loops. So which can cling right, on that's to each why other. one side of the Velcro exactly. is harsher and the other one exactly. is softer. So that's the origin of Velcro and that's how it was, that's the inspiration basically, those burrs. Interesting. Thank you very much, Dan and Jay. The more you know. Uh, now it's time for Test 24. Today we're testing the sensor wake and as you can probably tell from its name, it's a kind of alarm clock that gives off an odor of your choice at a certain time. Uh, that uh, must be what you're setting up there, Dan and Jay. Absolutely. Tell us uh, what flavor woke you up today. Uh, today I was woken up fortunately by sunlight because I'm not a big fan of perfumes or I don't like aromas. But yes, for someone who likes being woken up by you know, sweet so you smell. chose you chose not to try it. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? But I did try it later. <laughs> and then, so someone who wants to be woken up by different aromas, there's an option in the form of this clock called Sensor Wake. Uh -huh. What you do is you have different capsules with uh, different flavors. All right, we'll so test you them have out a later. Yeah. Flavor. Let, let's see. Uh, you can try it out now. You can choose which one you oh want my God. to. <laughs> All right. Let, let's try coffee. I see you oh, have let's coffee smell, there. Let's smell money. Okay? Money? Yeah. What's it's this, a dollar what does smell. money smell like? Mmm, dollar. <laughs> it's green. Yeah. I have oh a my God, one. it smells so bad. <laughs> Maybe it's, it comes close to it. I don't know. I'm very bad at smelling things. I, I can't smell anything on no? this dollar. Anyway. So this I'm, is a, a Kickstarter project undertaken by a French startup. 
And uh, a very a very young gentleman, I believe. I think he's about 18 years old. Must be, I guess. So uh, the alarm clock works in a way that you put this capsule in it. You set the alarm, and uh, it it won't. There won't be any sound. There won't be any light. You'll just be woken by, yeah, by the smell aroma. of coffee exactly. or whatever, or, but or if, money. But if if you have say stuffy nose or the aroma is not stimulating enough to wake you up, uh -huh. if you don't uh, turn it off, then there's a sound alarm. So you you ultimately oh, okay. eventually you get woken okay. up. Either by smell or by sound. Okay. So, yeah, so that's that the... kind of proves that actually smell doesn't wake you up. I mean, some people might get woken up. I don't know. But okay. there's an option. If you don't get woken up by smell, there's always the... Okay. The... Let's see coffee. Oh, you want to try coffee? I want to try coffee. All right. I want to see. I like the smell of coffee. But try this Actually, up. it's very nice to be woken up by the smell of coffee in the morning. This does this, this not... <laughs> it kind of smells like coffee. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> So yeah, that's the whole idea of this, uh, how does this it, device. How does it work exactly, though? So what you do is you take the capsule. There's a little opening here. You insert it. Mm -hmm. And then you just keep it next to your bedside. Uh -huh. You set the alarm on. Because this is a prototype, it's not uh, in perfectly working condition right now. But right. by November, the product should be out on the market. Uh -huh. And by then, I'm sure it will. And so there's like a, dif a diffuser? Yeah, there's a diffuser. Yeah, a and diffuser. so it just it just starts blowing out. Exactly, at the, the, the trigger. Air. The the trigger is when you set the the timing trigger is the alarm basically when you set which mm -hmm. you set, and then the diffuser starts working. How much does it cost? Uh, so this will be available on the market in November. It will cost around eighty dollars. And how long does it last? These little, these. What are they? What are they? But there are multiple. They're like cartridges. Is yeah, they are cartridges. Is? They they can last multiple times. Monoi. Monoi, yeah. You want to try that out? I don't know what monoi means. Monoi is, a, is a, an oil that comes from a tropical flower. Mm. Yeah, it's an oil that you put like in the sun and things like that. It smells pretty good. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right. It smells pretty good. That's great. So, yeah, this is the product, and that's the test for now. All right, Dan and Jay, thanks for showing us this uh, unusual alarm clock. <laughs> that's the end of our show, but you can find us on Facebook or Twitter. Our hashtag is Tech24, and we leave you with these images of an origami robot that folds by itself. Check it out. It's amazing. It can walk. It can swim. It can carry loads, and it even disintegrates. See you next time.